Welcome to a collection of Stuart engines and some other nice things. This is part 15. More work on the twin Victoria steam engine. Shortening the crosshead guide bar spacers to decrease the distance between them so that the crossheads become a much better fit. Removing the piston rod and steam chest glands, then taking a look at the cylinder slide valve ports. Shortening the spacers between the slide valves. As this is a twin cylinder engine, I'm going to have to do this twice. But I'm only really going to show the process doing it once, because doing the other side is identical to this. The first thing to go is the part that supports the rocking arm shaft, followed by undoing the two nuts at the other end to release the top guide bars. Unfortunately though, the person who actually constructed this Stuart Models pre-machine kit put the thread sealant on the nut, and as I tried to remove the nut, the entire stud screwed out of the sole plate. Here I am refitting the stud using the two nut method. Lock two nuts together and then you can tighten the stud as far into the hole as you want. It's easier to use a socket like this one. I applied some Loctite 603 to the end of the stud where it goes into the sole plate, so with a bit of luck it shouldn't come loose again. That's one job done and here you can see the stud back in place. I let some time elapse and when I came back I removed the nut but without removing the stud this time as it was loctited into the sole plate. It's never a good idea to use thread sealant on very small nuts and bolts. The same thing happened here. Once again the entire stud came away. When I put this part back together I'm going to repeat the process you've just seen by loctiting the stud into the sole plate. This stud was a bit too long. So once I removed the nut, I removed the stud and turned it round to shorten it. Generally studs have got different thread lengths at each end. Here you see me removing the top guide bars and I'm placing them in a position on the engine's wooden mounting plinth so that I know which one goes where. I'm working on this engine in my second workshop and in my second workshop I do not have a lathe. Besides, I only need to remove a very tiny amount from the spacers. I did the job as usual in an unorthodox manner. I used an electric drill into which I fitted the spacer and then I used a flapper wheel in my Proxon motor tool. And this worked perfectly. The end result was surprisingly accurate. I didn't do it in one, I did it in stages. Grind some of the metal off the spacer, refit the spacer, refit the top guide bar, try the crosshead in place, and eventually the crosshead became a perfect fit between the guide bars, which is just what I wanted. In this clip, I'm temporarily refitting the guide bar and testing the fit. At this stage, it's almost perfect, but it needed just a tiny bit more metal removing from the spacer. This method is more accurate than it looks. I'm holding the electric drill down onto the bench and I'm holding the proxon against the side of the bench. This time the clearance between the crosshead block and the guide bars is just about perfect. There's no shake on it at all. But to test it properly you do have to bolt down the top guide bar. Here I'm rotating the engine to verify that it's not rattling at all. There's something wrong with the glands on this engine. They're not particularly blowing too badly, but they're bolted tightly up against the cast iron cylinder cover. This is no good at all. I've seen this situation many times on miniature steam engines. I'm going to remove the gland cover and have a look inside. Unfortunately though, once I'd removed the nuts, the gland cover was very reluctant to come out of the hole in the cylinder cover. Removing it, I used the age-old method of a Stanley knife blade. With just a few light taps, the gland cover moved out sufficiently to allow it to get a screwdriver behind it. And surprise, surprise, no gland packing at all is evident around the piston rod. Time to repeat the process and remove the valve rod gland. This time one of the studs came out, but that's not a problem. This gland cover wasn't quite as tight, so just by pressing the Stanley knife against it, the gland cover came out of the hole easily. In this clip, I think you can see the remnants of some sort of valve packing in there. I'll look at this in more detail shortly. 
it's time to remove the steam inlet piping and also the steam chest cover. I shortened the studs by grinding them, but they really need machining. Before reassembly, I'll take these out, go up to the workshop, fit them in a lathe and clean them up that way. It would be nice to see them all nicely domed at the top. With the steam chest removed and the slide valve, I can have a look at the ports. And I have to say, I'm not too impressed with the different shapes of the two inlet ports. One of the ports is clearly wider than the other. I'm also concerned about the presence of any moulding sand in the castings. I've come across this several times on Stuart Victoria's. These ports are cast in, they're not machined. And I've seen examples where there's so much casting sand in the casting, it's just a solid mass and the steam can't get anywhere down to the cylinder or back from it. This one seems to be clear. On the end of my finger at the moment, it is not a squashed insect. It's all that remains of the tiny amount of packing that was inside the valve rod gland. This is what is sold as gland packing these days. I never use it. I would either use an O-ring or unpick some vintage braided graphited yarn to get the lengths. Although I do like the Teflon coated yarn. I have some of that too. And that's probably what I'll use on this engine. And the good news is I can pack the gland on the steam chest before I put it back in position so it's easier to get to. And that is it for this episode. I'd just like to say as I always do, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.